Apple's biggest announcement. A purple iPhone. <laughs> now actually, Apple started off with a flurry of punches announcing several things right off the bat. First up, updates to the Apple credit card program. Now I've never really been a big fan of credit cards, but I have always enjoyed the transparency in the Apple credit card app. It always tells me how much I've spent and how much I owe but now they've expanded the program so that families can jump on board. Next up, Apple announced that podcasters can start offering subscriptions in their podcast for things like ad-free listening or early access, etc. Then something we have been anticipating for a long time, AirTags. Now, AirTags are small little discs that you put into a holder that can be clipped to almost anything, like your keys or a purse or your backpack. And then you can use the Find My service to find those items, just like you currently track your iPhone or iPad or Mac. Now, fortunately, Apple has also implemented some privacy protections with AirTags to avoid non-consensual tracking. Then we had an update to Apple TV, complete with a redesigned remote. Now, from a professional angle, uh, specifically for lawyers that use iPads and they use an Apple TV to show their iPad screen, I'm really interested to see how the, quote, enhanced AirPlay functionality works on the new Apple TVs. It is supposed to support a higher frame rate so that it can support some more modern video formats. And then we got back to color. I was fortunate to upgrade to a new M1 processor in December 2020 when I purchased a brand new MacBook Pro. And it is just simply amazing in terms of speed, responsiveness, and capability. So actually just a few months later now, Apple is bringing the M1 processor to their line of iMac desktop computers. And they come in a multitude of colors. Color! Yes, the iMac is impressively thin and compact and lovely, but there were two quick things that stood out for me. First, they improved the camera and they put in a 1080p camera, finally. Even my brand new MacBook Pro still has the old 720p camera, which is okay for most uses, but the fact that they've upgraded that camera now really shows that they are responding to the way that most of us work virtually these days. And they improved the built-in microphones and speaker system as well. The second thing that caught my eye was they only showed this for a split second. It was the new power brick which actually has an ethernet port built in. Why hasn't somebody else thought about this before? So in other words, that means there's just one cord that needs to come from the power brick into your iMac. It's uh, less mess, it's much nicer. And then showing the importance of the iPad, Apple spent half of the one hour presentation talking about a brand new iPad Pro. iPad is a magical sheet of glass that can become anything you want it to be. This will be the fifth generation iPad Pro. And the biggest addition here is the fact that Apple is putting in an M1 processor into this new iPad Pro which means that the new iPad Pro is going to be about 50% faster than the previous model of the iPad Pro. And you can get 16 gigabytes of RAM in the new iPad Pro, along with two terabytes of local storage. Now this is truly bringing desktop class power to the tablet, which really begs the question. What you doing on your computer? What's a computer? And how great is all that? Well, it's fantastic as long as you are using your iPad for professional photography editing or audio editing or high-end video editing, none of which most lawyers are gonna be doing with their iPad. Well, what this means for most business professionals and lawyers is that you might notice a slight increase in the speed when you tap an app and it opens immediately. As Jeff Richardson on iPhone JD said, a faster iPad Pro is a more responsive iPad Pro. Apple also discussed how they have improved the display on the new iPad Pro with something that they call Liquid Retina XDR Display, which uses some incredibly crazy number of mini LEDs 
The USB-C port on the new iPad Pro has been updated to support Thunderbolt, which the main thing here that I see for most of you is it'll support faster file transfer. So if you connect a modern day USB thumb drive or external hard drive to the iPad, it will be blazingly fast in copying files back and forth. Then they talked about the camera and specifically the front facing camera on the iPad Pro. Now it already takes amazing selfies, but they have now improved it with an ultra wide camera with a 120 degree field of view. Now, Apple calls this center stage because if you have the camera turned on and you're in a meeting, for example, the camera will recognize you and basically pan around if you move from side to side and follow you. And then if you add a new person into the picture, the camera will also accommodate multiple people at one time. Now, thankfully, Apple has confirmed that the center stage technology will work with any video conferencing app. So you can use it in Teams and Zoom. And this is really great because the response I've been having on the videos I did about using Zoom on your iPad has just been amazing. So I know a lot of you are doing this and I really think that center stage camera technology is gonna be fantastic. When it comes to storage on an iPad, I have often said that 512 gigabytes is plenty of storage space on an iPad for most of the documents that many of us are going to be accessing and organizing. But everyone is concerned that, that you know at some point you're gonna run out of space. But the new iPad Pro can now be configured with up to two terabytes of local storage space. Now, that would be great if you are storing a ton of videos and photos. It's just not that important probably for most business professionals and lawyers. But if you want to upgrade to the latest and greatest, you're going to have plenty of storage space now. All of these improvements come with a price, both literally and figuratively. Over the years, the iPad Pro has been getting slightly heavier and heavier with each new model. The third generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro from 2018 weighed in at 1.39 pounds. In 2020, the fourth generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro weighed in at 1.41 pounds. And now this new fifth generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro will weigh 1.5 pounds. Or if you choose to get the cellular model, that's gonna bump you up to 1.51 pounds. Now in addition, Apple is going to include a 20 watt charger brick with these new iPad Pros, which is an upgrade from the 18 watt charger brick. I'm not really sure if that's gonna add much uh, bulk to the package, but just the fact this is getting a little bit heavier is something people might wanna consider because it's something that you're going to be carrying around with you a lot. The new iPad Pro 12.9 inch model starts at $1,099. That's not too bad when it comes to the pricing of brand new iPads, but if you configure everything on the new iPad Pro to the maximum specs that you can put into it, 16 gigs of RAM, cellular, two terabytes worth of local storage, you are now looking at an iPad that costs $2,400. You could buy a really fancy high-end MacBook Pro or a Windows computer for that price. Not to mention, in order to make the iPad Pro functional, you're probably gonna to need to get a Magic Keyboard, which is about another $350. Oh, and the Apple Pencil, which is probably another $100, $120. So just keep all of that in mind as well. This is the new 11 inch and 12.9 inch iPad Pro. All of this to say, it's still very exciting. Even if you don't need the brand new fifth gen iPad Pro, and many of you probably don't need that, it is still very exciting what we're seeing Apple is doing with the iPad Pro. All of this bodes well for the iPad's future. The fact that Apple is putting in desktop class processors and storage into these tablets uh, certainly means that they are investing quite a bit in it. Plus, in a few months, Apple is gonna host their software developers conference. And I can only imagine what a lot of developers are gonna start 
developing for the iPad now that they know they've got access to a lot more power and capabilities with the iPad. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.